Art-based approach to participatory action research, uh, tribal education methodology. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Lincoln, and uh, this project I'm doing is uh, part of the Changing the Story, a large grant uh, by HSC, GCRF, large grant uh, as part of it. Um, I, it's almost uh, to a com coming to an end to this, um, uh, the last March, the project has uh, officially concluded. Uh, many of the activities, um, but considering the COVID situation, particularly in India this time, um, so um, we couldn't finish some of the work. So we made an ad hoc plan to finish that work. So my team in India is waiting for, um, you know, to, to, to go to the field and um, the field again. So um, tribal, oh, there's a problem, okay. Um, so uh, tribal education methodology is an art-based international project and it has um, the aim of the project is to um, explore south-led epistemologies particularly particularly the um, tribal epistemology i will explain in a minute um, you know how i'm 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 i'm, I'm working with that um, community um, empower the vulnerable youth I'm working with a tribal community in South of Kerala. I, I'll, I, will, I will give you much more details. So these are the aims of the project, empower the vulnerable youth. So eradicate poverty, lack of education and social security. So these are the aims of the tribal education methodology project. Um, it's a collaborative project between government, universities, NGOs, um, artists, grassroots civil society organizations and largely the target group is the young people and the large settlement of um, you know tribal settlement in Wayanada which is in the southern state of Kerala. So I think uh, the project is located uh, in, in Kerala which is on the um, southern one of the southern states uh, of Kerala um, the, the place is called Wayanad. Um, so Wayanad is located in the Western Kurds, um, which is a, um, which is, uh, which is, which, which has got a large um, uh, number of um, tribal uh, population in the, in, in, in that particular region. Um, so they, each each community, each tribal community has uh, their own language, rituals, customs, and uh, uh, social hierarchy. So it's a, it is a diverse group, um, and and that is one of the problems which we face in the project is to address all these different languages. So and 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 and, and also this is a rich the, the tribal community is rich in handicrafts. Um, bamboo, bamboo uh, handicrafts is very common in there. Um, archery, uh, indigenous medicines, and they have quite a lot of uh, healing practices and plant medicines. So this is a uh, and, and art and heritage and culture is very much uh, part of their life as well. So and the the problem with this community is um, after. There, there are so many issues with the communities. That is where the project is, um, 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 you know, addressing some of the issues. So, so let us see this uh, to to introduce the community is really important. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
it is very interesting to see when you look at the community everywhere you you, you will see um their oral traditions they have a very rich oral traditions uh, songs um rituals uh, several kinds of rituals and performances are very much a part of their um part of their life um so they can't live with this uh, kind of um you know rituals and uh, songs and performance um um and, and all, all sort of the heritage part of it um but at the same time the communities are facing a lot of um, issues a uh, number of things because um india ha got independence in 1947 and in in 1950s there was a ratification of indian constitution in the 1915s make the um uh state the land you know holders of the uh, you know forest land that makes uh, many of the um tribal communities um you know homeless landless so they don't have a, their own land so most of them are um in working in the farms agricultural uh, you know sector in the farms but they are landless farmers they work for um other other, other farmers you know other other big big farming um you know uh, estates um and 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 also in uh, um 90 you know indian forest act uh, there was uh, you know a number of uh, revisions in the forest act 1927 and, uh, and and again the wild protection act in 1973 um both effectively made them uh, very restrictive of the access to the forest um because tribal communities are very much a part of the um, their their living you know circumstances surroundings are very much related to the forest but number of in implementation of the laws they restrict them to access the forest so that is that is um that's why they are uh, in, in a way they are detached from their natural environment um and then you know so the government has a lot of um policies and programs to empower the tribal communities but they are officially done uh in the sense that any programs officially done has got you know so the, for the name sake for the tick box as a tick box box exercise so that is what government government always claim that you know so that we have policies and programs in place for the tribal welfare but when we actually look at the issues there are so many issues they are facing first of all they are disconnected from their natural surroundings uh, environment and then they are really marginalized in many ways um the land land landless farming farmers is a big entity a, a community um uh, in in wayanad so um occasionally there were issues because when the um tribal ownership of the farmland is an ongoing political issue when it comes to um the the, the, the tribal community in wayanad and a constant cause of protest in the region um there was much more uh, there are um, uh, severe issues you know so damage has been made <clears throat> to the community because the government places a strict measure <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry government places a strict measures um and law and order to um to 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 tackle with uh, any protest um from the tribal communities so for um occupying the forest land or um and and then there will be forceful evacuation through brutal means so many of them many of those stories have not been reported in the media because the first thing the police do is to stop the media to enter into the forest land uh, where the tribal hamlets are much more located in the interior forest because the access is really um um you know less access uh, so in that sense you know so much of the these protest and the things we, we know very little about about what happened in those um time but uh, after that you know so the aftermath will be you know so we in our uh, in my research in my field work i found a lot of lot of stories about you know so people have been arrested and uh, you know you know 
put in prison and you know so that that sort of things so, you know government is very very um take always strict measures on this and one of the other things which we find is um the um um you know uh teenage uh, teenage pregnancy is a very common thing in uh, there so rape cases um you know that is a, we had a survey of the abuse of uh, women uh, particularly um uh, teenagers and that is raised three times uh in the last 10 years when you look at these um figures you'll be alarming um 2007 it is a 500 reg registered rape cases but when it comes to 2015 it is 12318 were reported in 2016 you can see it is it is it is going ahead which is 14000 um so you see most cases were unregistered due to fear of consequences um this teenage teenage pregnancy is a quite a common thing um around and there are a lot of mental issues um because the because of the social pressure because of the so many um so many other social factors and why not is a why not is known as a spice land which means that a lot of tea plantations lot of cardamom and a lot of plantations are there these plantations big plantations and owned by either national companies you know national you know companies or rich rich individuals uh, rich individuals migrate to uh, to wayanad uh buying from you know hackers or hectares of farmlands um you know for 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 you know hectares of farmland so that is a, that's a kind of a situation so mostly um um most of the um tribal um community people from the tribal community the tribals their main occupation is the farming so working in the farmlands so, so um so there are a lot of mental issues um you know within the community um alcoholism and a number of the social issues which need uh, attention so the project tribal education methodology so focus was the education aspect so because there is again problem with the education um uh, although the literacy rate in kerala is higher than other states in india with uh, 94% and it has the lowest dropout rate of school um, students so that is the national average of uh, uh, 0.53 um, in the country but when you look at the tribal communities because the school dropout is the highest uh, compared to national average 61.11 uh, percent in 2007 8 um um a uh, survey you know um census and in the five years later it has increased to 77.23% uh when we look at the 20 uh, 2011 2012 um you know government uh, records so which means that what is the reason behind this uh, um you know so school drop dropout that's a very interesting thing because as i mentioned in the beginning of the talk that um each each tribal community has their own language but at the same time the state has a um language because india is divided by different states on the basis of language linguistic diversity in india is so huge so um in during the um you know um um you know independence when the states were divided when the country is divided into 23 states so mostly they took um, the approach of the linguistic region so kerala is the the main main language mainstream language is the uh, a particular language is, is there and the state missionaries operate within that particular language but when it comes to the tribal communities they have their own language which is unrecognized so no no nowhere there is no 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 dictionary is there no literature has been written in there um no scriptures are there it is an oral language uh but mostly they use their language for their 
um, um, you know, uh, daily things, you know, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a language which is daily used for their communication and their living. Uh, but when they come to the school, they are literally learning a foreign language, which is the language of the state. So although the tribal communities are part of that, uh, you know, Indians or Keralites, uh, part of the community, they are linguistically, there is a huge gap. And, and also the social perception, when you look at the, um, uh, the uh, mainstream, uh, the social perception is, you know, no tribal, um, you know, the tribal languages are inferior um, because it has no literature being written. Uh, it is an oral language. So in a way, the tribal community take all of that, um, all of that uh, um, shame and all of that burden, yeah, it will become, become their burden. Uh, though, so when you see, when I, when I saw the children, you know, in the teenagers in the schools, um, my project work in five schools in Wayanada, um, and I work with them um, to using forum theater method, or method, I will explain in a minute, um, but they are really shy of speaking their own language. When you look at the school, these are the problems. I, ha I, I cannot say that I have resolved all the problems of that, I am, that my project, my research was facing. When you go to the school, in, um, in the school, there is no encouragement of um, tribal language. They cannot speak the tribal language in, um, in, in their classroom or in the school, in a common, you know, in, in the assembly or anywhere. The tribal language is speaking tribal language is not being encouraged. Um, when the um, leisure time, when you know, when when children go out for um, in in the ground, you can see that the small groups are forming. You know, you can see four, five small groups are forming. And when you go and look at these group, they are they 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 are grouping in terms of the. Um, the language in the sense that the language, the, the same language, the people speaking same language will come together and, you know, so they will have a communication. So I realized that language is a strong thing, you know, culture and culture and uh, culture, lang culture and language, the culture, culture and heritage is a strong binding thing um, within the community. But when it comes to the education, um, the state education has no recommend, no, no um, recognition uh, of these uh, tribal language. So that is the dilemma. That is the um, crisis of um, you know tribal education uh, in Kerala, particularly in Wayanad. So, and uh, that, and this is uh, you know um, mostly spoke. So then um, we developed a, a project um, in the sense that I developed a project as the principal investigator of the project. Um, some of the objectives were to, 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 to develop a sustainable curriculum uh, for tribal youth, um, uh, you know, integrating tribal heritage or oral and their performance tradition. So that is the gap I found so education is there, but they are le le learning in a different language. But at the same time, in the curriculum, there is no room for their cultural expression. When you look at Kerala, Kerala is, um, if, you, if you know Kerala, it has got a culturally a rich landscape. There are a lot of festivals. Um, and, and the government recognized so many festivals as, um, you know, and then you have a national holiday for those um, festivals. Uh, but none of the uh, tribal festivals has been recognized by the government, which is a, which is a strange thing. Um, and then I, you know, so um, to bring together, bring, to, uh, bring the community together and work with them to, um, to, to, to make them confident um, I used, largely I used art-based methodologies. Um, I used to painting, I used to theater, I used to singing, uh, oral traditions. But in my presentation, I, I'm just focusing on the theater aspect of it. So how did I work and how that impact on the um, society. So the fundamental issue is due to the large um, number, uh, ratio of dropout 
what happened to this um, young youth, youth, tribal youth. So they are always put behind because they have no education. They, they didn't complete even the um, you know, preliminary education. They couldn't complete the preliminary education, even the um, accepted level of um, higher you know, um, you know, um, uh, education, secondary education. So then they don't, they, they don't get proper jobs. They can't for, go for a higher education. So then they follow their parents, you know, so in the sense that they are going to a farm to work. So it, a tea plantation or a cardamom plantation, they will work. And nearby states like Mysore, um, you know, there is a lot of labor migration from Kerala. So Wayanad is uh, located in the borderline with Mysore um, um, and uh, Mysore is in Karnataka, Karnataka and Kerala. That's the borderline, you know, you know so Wayanad borders with these two states. In Mysore, there are so many farmlands. So, so there were labor migration from um, from uh, from Wayanad to Mysore, and there are middle middlemen. Uh, it's a very interesting scenario. There are middlemen, so they come to Wayanad, um, you know, recruit these youngsters, drop out youngsters, and they will, um, you know, they they will they will take them to Mysore because they will go there and live there for some time and do then work. And come back after a couple of weeks, they will come back to their home and that sort of thing. So the youngsters, what they pick up from this kind of um, you know migration trap, you know labor migration is, they will be introduced to, to drugs, they will be introduced to, to alcohol, because there there is there is a, a a systematic exploitation on go, going on in that level, because they are paid low 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 um, wages. And they will, they have been introduced, um, you know, drug and alcohol, um, you know. So, um, and that is one sector. Then generally, when you look at that, education, lack of education is something that you put them back. And then there is a poverty in the, um, in the region and all sort of social issues, the, the, the education, lack of education is a cause for that. So then I try to explore the, uh, in, in the project we try to explore the tribal heritage. Um, uh, that is a language oral traditions and the performance as uh, this is the, 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 this from one of the workshops uh, we had. <laughs> This is one of the workshops in the school where um, um, a, a person uh, who knows the tribal songs, uh, these children, you know, the um, Although the children come from the uh, tribal communities, they are not, they, they didn't get any opportunity to express this uh, or not even sing a song in their school. So the workshops allowed them to sing their own songs uh, in their own language. So that was the beginning of, um, uh, we tried with a lot of uh, preliminary workshop, exploratory workshop where uh, we encouraged the people, you know, the students to sing, they speak in their own language, sing, 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 sing their own songs. And this is one of the examples of. And uh, they also have a lot of, um, although I used uh, Bavolian uh, exercises and games uh, for the theater workshop, uh, I realized that these uh, tribal communities have the lots of games, you know, so indigenous games and uh, lots of, um, you know, uh, uh, games and playing, playing and games and a little bit of theater, um, uh, storytelling forms of theater. And that is, that is really very much um, an unexplored area. So although I started with the Bavolian techniques, um, but I slowly shifted into their own um, methods and uh, their own, their own uh, games and practice of performance practices. So uh, one of the examples, I can, I can show one example. This is normally they play this game everywhere uh, when they are in their hamlets. 
but they didn't get, play these games in the school because these are, um, you know, that this is a tribal game. So the, the games coming from the tribal community. So they have they are hesitant to, to show any of their cultures in the public uh, space. That's very interesting. You can see that, you know, so they're really enjoying what they are uh, doing their own things um, in, the, in, the, in the school, um, you know. So that is what an amazing thing um, I found in the beginning of that. Uh, oh. And then slowly after this, uh, th this was a really useful because it, it, it was my own because I come from a theater, um, you know, theater and performance studies background. Uh, I'm, I'm exposed to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, training methods and, uh, you know, style of styles in Western and the uh, Asian traditions. But in this project I explored, it, it was a, a eye opening for me to see that there are uh, there are there, there are things within the tribal communities which need much more attention because how they connected the individual with the community is through to, through oral and performance traditions, and they have a huge repos repository of uh, games which uh, which which is which we I, I never knew that so. Uh, the, 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 based on that exploratory workshop in which I also find their cultural resources. Um, we moved into um, a kind of, um, you know, um, theater sessions where I used a number of techniques. Um, so improvisations, games and exercises were used in those workshops. Um, so basically to build up their confidence, um, the, the kind of mental imagination, um, you know, so and solidarity. So these are the three focus, you know, confidence, solidarity, and the imagination. Um, so they are they are they are highly imaginative compared to many other, uh, uh, you know, my my workshop experience in different other contexts. Um, so they are naturally, um, you know, you know, um, they have a lot of resources. Naturally, they gained a lot of. Um, resources through their cultural practice. So this was the techniques. Improvisation was a major technique, theater and games. As I said, although I used uh, Bavarian techniques in the beginning, I slowly avoided that and brought, um, you know, their own um, uh, games from their own tra cultural traditions. That makes them more confident. And towards the end of these workshops, in a series of workshops, I can see that a group came together as a um, as, a, as, a, as a solid group, and uh, they are capable of expressing their, they, they learned a lot of skills, uh, performative skills to, to, to express their th thoughts and express their emotions and to put together some small improvisory thing, imp improvisory skits, um, small, small performances addressing their own issues, um, the issues of alcoholism, what you see in the screen is a small um, performance which we developed um, uh, during the workshops about, you know, uh, domestic violence. Uh, domestic violence is an, another common thing because alcoholism is a very common thing, and you know that leads to domestic violence and teenage pregnancy, and and it just go or goes on, go on or on, on, on to another. So um, and 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 then you know so. Um, storytelling is, uh, they always tell stories and uh, we, in the workshops, we encouraged them to bring their own stories. Um, I used to storytelling as part of the devising process because the stories they collect from their community or the stories they bring into the workshop. So we use that stories to develop, develop a performance. Um, in workshops, many games involve telling one's background or personal stories. 
Um, and uh, that will be looked at into the rehearsal. Um, uh, as I said, participants make a scene based on a true story told by a group of performance. And then we are ready for the performance and these performance were taken to different um, hamlets, you know, villages, we call it the tribal villages. Tribal villages called Ur. Ur is the local language of the tribal communities. But because in 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 a, in a particular Ur, you will you will see, you know, um, thousand, uh, two thousand, two thousand and five hundred. That's a kind of a um, density, you know, population in that one um, Ur. And there are um, so many Ur, you know, several um, uh, you know locations, uh, tribal hamlets. So my group has performed this place in several places. Um, and, and, and also in the performance, we encouraged um, the audience to stop the performance. That is a boring technique we use, um, stop the performance. Because if there is a, in, in many places, you know, so we have a very, very strong discussion because when it comes to alcoholism, so some of the male members in the society, they object that. <laughs> so they, they said that that is not a big problem. And, you know, so, uh, so that, that's sort of the things. And then there will be a discussion because mostly um, uh, women uh, in, the, you know, uh, in, the, in the audience, they, they might, they strongly oppose to the, um, uh, maybe, you know, so male position on, um, you know, the, 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 the same issue. So in some places we had a very strong community engagement at, at, but at the, some places they don't know how to engage with, they don't know how to react with that sort of a situation. But always, always um, we encouraged the audience to stop the performance and, uh, and, and uh, you know, express their you know, opinion. So based on the opinion, again, it's using a Bavolian technique, Augusto Bavol's techniques, um, the group will reenact the performance. And, the, yeah, and the, the, what we are seeking is um, to, to kind of solution. If, if, if there is a problem, you know, issue-based performance where we can reach, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a solution can be reached. So that was the aim of this performance. In many ways, you know, so, um, you know, we cannot reach a solution because this is an ongoing thing. But what we achieved in this process, which is I'm very you know, happy that, um, happy to say that uh, we, we, we created an, a large awareness about the societal issues, the problems they are facing, including edu education to some of the serious um, social and uh, you know, social issues. So, um, and, and also, um, it, as, as a methodology, when I look at this and analyze it, um, I used three um, methodological approaches, performative um, methodologies I used. I would call it a three dimensions. One is the dimension of memory, uh, potential to reconstruct the past. Because when I ask them to bring something from your community, a song, or or a, or a true story, or what has happened in your house, or you know in your village. So they are bringing, they are evoking some of their memories and bringing bringing their memories back, the memories of their cultural past, or the memories of their community. So that is the memory dimension. So when the memory dimension is evoked, the group will be really charged and active and dynamic because they are connecting because as in the beginning of the talk i said that you know so they are fundamentally the community is disconnected from their natural environment and their cultural environment so this memory dimension helped um, them to reconnect with the community so they they remember some of the flowers and the trees and birds and so many things and they also remember their past in the sense cultural um, past in the through through singing some songs, uh, playing some of the indigenous games, and that is the memory dimension. And then the dimension of imagination uh, that, uh, that I explored through the workshops and improvisory techniques. When I used the improvisory techniques, I 
I, I explored the, I used this uh, dimension of imagination. So this dimension of imagination is potential to understand the world in terms of becoming, because they are, at the moment, they are in a particular um, situation, uh, but the theater helped them to becoming, uh, to, to, to transform their situation into a different one in the sense that now they are really confident. They confidently they are going, they can speak about um, their issues. Confidently uh, they can perform. Confidently they can address the issues. Um, so that is, that is the whole workshop was not only to create a piece of theater, a piece of performance, but it is a reconstruction of their own self because a self which is connected to the past at the same time, you know, you know, their cultural past at the same time addressing the, the, the current issues. Because uh, as you know that India being a post-colonial country, the education is largely colonial, um, co operating in the colonial mode in the sense that, you know, so um, remembering and the reproduction of, you know, you know cerebral centric. Education is a very much a cerebral centric it is it is the it is the activity of the brain so you learn something you memorize it you reproduce it but you but when you look at the aboriginal societies their epistemologies are different they have a different understanding of the um, epistemology and the practice because they they, they, they they their learning is embodied learning they're learning from everywhere they're learning from a sound they're learning from from smell they're learning from the touch um, they, they, they know that when the rain comes, when, when they look at the trees, or when, we, when they look at the birds, a particular birds, a particular sound of the birds, uh, they, can, they can say that there is going to be rain. So the, their learning is not a um, colonial mode of learning because it is, a, it is an embodied learning. Um, and and that, is, that, is, that, that, that comes from the tribal epistemological understanding of the self and the world. So, so the dimension of imagination through the workshop helped a reconstruction of their self, a reconstruction of the self to understand the world around them and address those issues of the world through by using the performance of practice. And the, finally, um, the third dimension I used is the dimension of action. So I will be finishing this presentation in the next few minutes. Um, sorry. Um, so the dimension of action is what is thinkable and what is doable. And then they have issues, you know, as, as I said, there are several issues, um, you know, alcoholism, for example, or issues in education, the problems they face in the school, the problems they face in the, in the, in the for, you know, when they go for work, so all these issues. So what is that issue? So what is the nature of the issue? Why they are facing this issue? Where does this come from? So they have to think about it. They have to think about their social position. What, where do they stand in the wider community, the Kerala community? Kerala is supposed to be one of the you know highly educated. I mean, you know, you know, highly, you know, in, 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 even in India, it is considered as a highly educated state. Um, you know, people in, in, in the state. So, but, but where, where, where their identity belongs there in, in the state, where, where they can identify, uh, the, the tribal youth can identify in the, in, in, in the state of Kerala or in the, in the cultural landscape of Kerala. So they have to think about that. Then what is doable, thinkable and doable, how to solve the problems, how to raise this concern. So that was the, um, my methodology um, to use this. Um, these are the group of 10 volunteers. Uh, we, we created a group uh, out of, um, uh, from this, uh, uh, you know, uh, community, five schools from out of these five schools, we gathered a youth volunteers. And then uh, they are, th this is the performance group as well. So they, they created a performance. Now they have finished in the last couple of weeks before, before India being listed at the, in the red list, COVID-19 red list. Uh, the last performance was done two weeks before that, that declaration of the red list. Now they can't go anywhere. They are, there is a kind of a temporary um, you know, lockdown in place in that area. So they can't go there. 
but we are regularly meeting in the Zoom online meeting. So uh, this is the youth volunteer team. This is a team I created from working with the five schools. Um, so they have some of their testimonies, some of their, um, you know, um, experience are amazing. They say that if they for the life for the first time, they feel that they got a language to speak. That's what they say. Um, they address. So this is this is in a in a hamlet. They are in the hamlet. When they visit the hamlet before the performance and after the performance, what do you see here is the forum after the performance. I again I used the Bavarian method um, to talk about them. So the performance is over. Now they are discussing the social issue performed in the, um, um, in the, in the in, you know, they have seen in the performance. So the 10 volunteers collected, collect these um, informations and then they will re reproduce, re-perform. Uh, the, the same performance will be um, performed again um, uh, with, the, with, with these recommendations, integrating these recommendations. So solutions will be changed characterization will be changed. So in the end, you know, so end will be changed. Most of the time we will keep our performance and open-ended thing. So intervention and sustainability, how do they, because mainly I worked with the community, um, you know, government. There are two reasons for that. The most important reason is in India, tribal communities in India is classified as vulnerable community. And as I said, that there are a lot of um, you know government programs to empower them. As a result, one barrier India government put for the researchers: you cannot simply go to a tribal community and do research. You need to process some. You need to process some permissions. You get a lot of permissions from government of Kerala. I, I faced a lot of problems with the getting these. Um, you know, uh, uh, permissions. So they will ask a number of questions. What is your intention? What you are going to do with the with the number of questions? So, as a strategy, although I started with an independent organ, you know, research with an NGO organization, um, non-governmental organization, I immediately found that this will not work. And then I approached the government, and then there is Kerala Development Innov Innovation and Strategic Council, and they are interested in the proposal. And then the proposal become the, the project to become my project to become part of the government project. So government is a partner of the project. The advantage of that is they will simply sort out the you know permissions for me to go to the um, tribal tribal communities to access the tribal communities to go to the school and to speak to the students and to go to the community uh, tribal hamlets and to speak to the people. So otherwise, I will be stopped by the police. I will be stopped by the um, you know tribal um, development education forest forest guards stop me everywhere. So that is the kind of a situation. So, and and then you know so having having government as a partner, I have much more freedom. So now we are working. The project is now finished. So intervention and sustainability as part of the sustainability and uh, intervention. So I created a small um, group of, um, uh, you know, the, the, the TEM volunteers. They formed a group of policymakers forum. I call it TEM Youth Policymakers Forum. So they will be, it, it is a completely youth-led activities. Nobody is going to take speaking on their behalf because now after the project of one year of project, uh, now they got to know, they know how to present their issues. They, first of all, they identified what their issues are, and then they know how to present these issues. When the lockdown is moved, and what they are going to do is, they are going to meet the government authorities. They are going to meet the Secretary of Education. They are going to meet the Health Education Secretary, and also the Minister of Education has agreed to meet this volunteers, 10 volunteers. And uh, this is the first time, this is the first time the Minister of Education in the state is meeting a group of um, uh, tribal students, uh, tribal students, uh, teenagers, coming to them with their own initiative, coming to speak to a Minister of Education saying that we have some problem with our education. So that is the success of the, this project as far as I am concerned. 
It has been in the media for a long time. The beginning of the impact and the public reach was really good uh, because there is a 34.8 million of population in Kerala, that, that state. And the project has al already reached more than one third of the population. Now it is more than that. There were programs in the TV, there were programs uh, in the public media about uh, the project. And this is our project team. So me, the principal investigator, uh, there is a co-investigator and the project manager. Both the, the co-investigator come from uh, the Central University of Kannur and the project manager is a leading um, personal um, person working in the tribal community for at least uh, 20, 25 years. She spent her whole um, career working with the community. So that is the team. And, uh, and, and, and we are, I'm, I'm still looking forward to, so my project has finished, uh, but the team is there. I, I did a, a very good foundation work there, but I'm looking for opportunities to continue this work. Thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.